This is the Equid E-Commerce Show with your host, Jesse Ness, along with Richard Ote. What's going on, Richie? What's happening, Jess? Yeah. It's that time again, podcast day. I love it. I love it. You know, uh, we've had a couple podcasts, actually. We had a couple um, a couple ago with on YouTube where we had the, the chef on there. Anyway, so we've talked a lot about video, but we've... We've said, oh, yeah, just pick up your phone and start taking videos. And that might be good advice for some people, but I think today is a day to take it a little more next level. Yeah. You know, like yeah. uh, we're going to give the real tips, the real like here's exactly what you do when you want to make some when you want to make some videos. So and we brought the right guy in. Yeah. So we brought the right guy. We, we've known this guy for several years through different different connections here in the San Diego, like internet marketing world. So uh, let's bring him on, Rob Burns. How hey, are you, Rob? Hey, great. How are you guys doing? We're awesome, man. It's good to see you. <laughs> we got an a in-studio guest, too. We always like that, so we can uh, see some eye contact and wave yeah. our hands and say, no, don't say that. Yeah, uh, this is yeah. fancy in here. Yeah. <laughs> Only the best for you, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't normally do this, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Only for you. Yeah. So, uh, so Rob, yeah, we've we've known you for a while. We've kind of known your paths around the internet marketing world. Um, you know, even back to like a lunch that we used to have. Um, give us a little bit of your your past and what brought you to today. Yeah, geez. So, um, I'll tr try to keep a long story short. Um, I would say uh, so. So pre-internet days, uh, we actually we had a, a company called Banyan Publishing, um, and we were agent, and we we did a lot of. Um, uh, marketing for hotels and resorts and hospitality. And, and so we, we had like all the major hotels uh, kind of th that we would do all their, their kind of media stuff. And um, we do like their sales materials and things like that. And we go into hotels and do photo shoots and all, all that fun stuff. And um, when September 11th hit, pretty much every CFO from every, every hotel chain corporation said, hey, this is, this is an act of God, so you know, we have to cancel our contracts because nobody's traveling for like a year. Mm -hmm. And nobody did. Like, if you remember that, like the airlines were just shut down. Yep. So we literally were shut down, like just, just dead in the water. And, and so we, we, like within two weeks, we closed our business. We had like a 5,000 square foot printing plant and oh, wow. you know, probably 25 employees. And so you had like a legit like healthy business, yeah. making money, boom, and, and, and then two weeks later, it's done. In one done. day, boom, it was done. And um, um, so, so in the interim, you know, I, I, we're just kind of kicking around. I'm like, well, what's, you know, what's the next thing I'm going to do? And, and um, way back in the day, uh, we, I used to, uh, I'd take a, every other semester off, I'd just go to Ba and go surfing. And, and like back then, you could just go to these little towns and villages and people would just adopt you. And 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 so I would I would always kind of make it a point of like hanging hanging out with the mom and like helping out and cooking or whatever kind of thing to kind of pay my way, and um, so I started developing these hot sauce recipes, and um, when uh, uh, and and I started kind of making my own original style and then I would come back and, and like I'd make them for, for friends and it wound up I was making like. 50, 60 gallons, you know, every other month for people because they were like, hey. So so when we shut down the business, you know, a bunch of my friends were like, well, you should start a hot sauce business. And I'm like, uh, I don't think that's a great idea. <laughs> and so um, uh, I entered this contest called the International Scovia Awards, which is it kind of sounds like uh, Silver Sow Awards or something, but it's actually the biggest hot sauce contest in the world. And I wound up winning it. Wow. And I'm like, oh, I'll make a run at it. And so... Um, Long story short, that's kind of really how I got into in, into the digital marketing side because just as we were you know um, scaling down Banyan Publishing is just about when it, people started really getting on the internet and doing things. And so I'm like, well, maybe I'll try selling this hot sauce on the internet and figuring it out. And like back then, it was just like there was like you know 50 different search engines and all this kind of stuff, and and it actually got pretty good. Um, and uh, uh, wound up like you know ranking number one in all these different search engines for the keyword hot sauce and and uh, that'll sell some hot sauce yeah and, yeah. and, 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 and long story short I wound up selling a company and but it, but it was kind of my you know dipping my toe in you know moving away from doing like agency stuff into doing like um, online digital stuff and then it's you know it's been really that that's been my path you know ever since and then um, we started a company maybe. 
eight, eight years ago uh, called PR Reach, and that was a video press release distribution service. And so we would actually have like a, a, a newsroom with an anchor person that would like do press releases. And that's that's really how we moved back back into video. I had done it a long time ago, you know, um, you know, pre-internet days, and then with video telepathy, and then and then uh, our uh, PR Reach, we, we evolved into video telepathy, which is doing you know branded content and uh, stuff for e-commerce, video video product videos for e-commerce. So that's kind of when all the pieces came back together. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. saw people selling things online. You took a little bit of your experience and knowledge from selling the hot sauce. You had the previous publishing company slash agency, so back yeah. in the agency, bringing it all together. What was um, what would get big wins back then for people? Was PR actually you know, back drive then, a lot of business? Yeah, because there was... Uh, we had done something a little bit different, too, because we had, we had tried to... Because PR really is pretty much the same as it was 125 years ago, except for now, it's you know most PR companies just have a digital version, and so it, there wasn't really that much technology embedded in it. And so we tried to figure out like what what are all the new things now? So like we would do like social distribution, which um, so we would uh, we had this whole network of you know just different social channels. So not only you know, and then it would also go out to all these other other. Uh, new syndication sources and it would embed the press releases and then um and, and some of the videos and then you could use the videos you know for in your media section so maybe you haven't ever been on the news but now you have this you know this news thing and we never tried to make it like you know especially these days you know quote unquote fake news you know it was always like a video news you know press release like we said that so it's not like you know, we we're trying to fake somebody out like we we're in a newsroom or something mm -hmm. um but it still it, it built that 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 credibility and so people could use those and and they they could syndicate it and people were actually using like the videos for ads uh, uh, for themselves and you know, different things like that so um and then also you know there was still some some uh seo value back then for press releases and which has actually kind of come full circle like people are using them again for uh I, like, like I actually sold that company, but I, I still use them all the time now. For so, <laughs> <laughs> so you still be you believe in it? Yeah, you still absolutely. use it. Yeah, the, yeah. The it. only reason I sold it was just because video telepathy was just taking off so much. You know, our, our, our uh, e-commerce product video business that I, I had to make a decision. It's like I couldn't really halfway do one or the other. I, I needed to fully, really kind of engage, and so yeah. So that's your full-time gig right now is video telepathy. Uh, yeah, it's been for the last couple of years. Yeah, Awesome. And obviously, that's why we brought you on. This is an e-commerce podcast. So, you know, we basically want to pick your brain and, you know, help the listeners of, you know, like how can they start building their videos? You know, like uh, almost everybody listening here is an Equid merchant. They right. have products generally going to be, you know, they have physical products. Not right. always, but... Let's just kind of go from that that standpoint. You know, how can people go from, man, I know I need a video to actually getting one done without it being a massive production? Right. I mean, yeah. Today, the the, the technologies is so. You, you can just do so much more with with less. So I mean, you know, people's you know, there, there's you know, there's more process. Was it there's more processing power in your smartphone now than you know, than Apollo 11 had, you know, yeah. <laughs> going to the moon. So, um, so, so, so in that respect, you know, if you do it right, like I, I, I still like, you know, I'm still kind of a little opposed, like the people are like, well, you can make these, you know, whole huge productions with your cell phone, but, but there's certain things with your cell phone that you can use. And, and like one is like testimonials, like real genuine testimonials from people, like getting those and, and putting it together. Um, those are amazing. You know, using it, you know, on, on social media for different things. So maybe you're having an event or maybe you're, um, you know, maybe you're doing a tour of your manufacturing plant or something like that. You know, doing using using a, the phone for like Facebook Live or, in, you know, an Instagram story or, or things like that. Um, you know, showing the product, you know, maybe being shipped out or sent like, hey, we're celebrating, you know, our one millionth, you know, widget we just, you know, shipped out today or you know, just different ideas, things like that. So I would say... Um, you know, without using, you know, with, with, you know, you know, not spending a ton of money and, and just, you know, kind of using, re, you know, available resources, there's a lot you can do. Um, the, the trick, the key to it is to be really organic and be real and, and not contrived and, um, and just kind of show what your business is about because people want to know that that's the biggest, that's the, you guys know from, from being e-commerce sellers, the biggest barrier to a sell is fear. And, 
they need to know, like, trust you. So the more things you can do where they know, like, trust you, then um, you know, you're you're that much closer to to, to selling your product. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's let's dive into the testimonial a little bit because that seems like for mm-hmm. somebody that's not you know like they haven't made videos before that right. feels like boy that would be a nice addition to the website or be a nice addition to their YouTube channel etc. Like so how do you do, how do you go about it like. Let's let's take a look at Rich, like a previous customer, maybe the the, the gals with the makeup glasses, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, um, so you take your product and you go, you know, yeah, go so, walk around outside and so you know. so what are what are, so what are makeup glasses? Okay, so that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, so they had these glasses, so they're you know women of a certain age. They, mm-hmm. they use that term. They need glasses to properly apply the makeup, but you can't have glasses in the way, right? Ah. So they, they had these glasses like with a little flip top mechanism. So you can have one one eye you can see, the other eye you flip it out of the way so you can apply your eye makeup. <laughs> That's and pretty stuff. cool. And then yeah. flip over. So yeah. You yeah. So yeah, it's like, it's kind of odd, right? Like you don't really think of it, but like if you need glasses, you try to apply eye makeup, like you need these things, right? Well, and it's got a few things. Like it, definitely needs demonstration right, right. Yes. yeah like yes. that's one of the like, what like you can't tell when you're just looking at a pair of glasses that you can move it all around like that so yep. so it's kind of a twofold when so it's kind of going back to jesse's thing you're out there you're trying to get a testimonial is there a certain way to question people where you can get an organic reply do you have certain questions that you give them or yeah that's and that's what's great about testimonials is our Things that you really can't say about yourself or your business, somebody can in a testimonial. I mm-hmm. mean, if if you start, you know, if you do a video and you're just bragging like, we're the best, we're the best, and everybody's like, yeah, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you have a real person that's purchased your product and, you know, and it's just an organic video and they're like, man, I love these guys. This is the best, you know, I, you know, makeup, eyeglass, you know, I've never seen this concept. It's crazy. But like what, you know, imagine if you just said that about your, it was like, hey, I'm with, you know, eyeglass makeup people and we're the best and this is crazy. Check us out. You know, you, you like people would just instantly, like their fear barrier would go up and they would just go, you know, their brains would seize up and just say, ah, I'm not buying anything from these people because I don't trust them, you know, kind of thing. And so, so testimonials are brilliant for trust and trust is probably the most important thing for an e-commerce seller to sell yeah so so like in a in a case like that right it's great to i mean i've been in e-commerce for a long time i've asked my customers for send me a testimonial video i've asked many many times i get like zero yeah you know like so great yeah it's tough Yeah. yeah like people just they're they might love you and they'll send you a nice little note and review you and stuff but to send you a video next to impossible you know, like, how do you go, when you have clients, like, how do you help them get testimonials? I mean, are you, like, just walking down the street with a camera? Or are you, you know, like, how do you go, how do you really go get the testimonials? Yeah, uh, well, a couple things. So if, you know, if you've been in business for a little bit and you start to have a customer base, you can start looking at your customer base and seeing, like, who is local. Um, and, you know, and then, you, you know, so people, you know, and find out people are within a certain, you know, parameter. Um you know, you can just say, hey, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you say, well, look, you know, we'll, we'll give you some more samples of products or whatever, you know, but we just yep. want to, we just want to get, you know, a, a little feedback from you. Um, that's one way. Um, <clears throat> the other way is we do something um, uh, called a market review video. And, and it's a little higher production value. Um, but for, you know, for, for a starter company, like it doesn't really have to be. And so, um, and it's it, and I would say it's the only time that I would say that you could do higher production value for a testimonial style because you always want it to be natural and organic. So, this is more kind of a man on the street thing and a person on the street thing where, um, you know, you would just go out with a product. So, so like we had somebody that had some organic coffee, um, and and so what we did is we actually went to the farmers market. We just hung out kind of at the edge of the farmers market when people were walking out. We were like, hey, you want to try some, you know, this organic coffee? And you know, almost everybody said yeah. And and then what we did is we asked them a series of questions that were based on the benefits or the pain points um, of that product because you also want to eliminate some of the pain points. Like what 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 sets your your product away? So in in that instance. Um, they had a, a single source coffee from Guatemala that was organic, and and I 
and I guess coffee traditionally, organic coffee doesn't taste as good as like commercial coffee, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, and also, you know, coffee is very acidic. And so th- this particular coffee, the way they, ra- they they grew it was like it was super low acid, so it wasn't hard on your stomach, and it and it tasted really good, you know, comparatively speaking for organic coffee. And so what we did is like when these people tried it, you know, we would we would ask them these questions. It's like, so hey, so how do, you know, what do you think? How does this feel on your stomach? You know, how how's that acidity? You know, kind of. And then they would answer back like, oh. You know, this is you know, it's really different from the most coffees. You know, they're kind of a little hard on my stomach, but this stuff is great. And so that's the section we would use. And it and it sounded like a statement, like they're making a statement. And then, or you know, how do you you know how do you like this coffee compared to you know other organic coffee? And then, you know, that part of course you know is not in the clip. And then they would you know they would say, oh, you know, this it really is. It's kind of sweet, and it's you know most organic coffee is kind of a little bland, but this stuff is great. And and so we would just. And then we would just take all of those and we would just edit them together and make this whole collage. And so basically, um, you know, so so a pain point would have been, you know, you know, high acid in coffee. So this solves that pain point, makes it completely different than most coffees. And also, you know, it's, it's different than most organic coffees. And so, you know, we, we just had, and we would do about five or six questions like that. And then we would just put them together. And so that way it's really... It's a testimonial video, video, which lowers the fear barrier, but it's also a sales video because it's it's going through all the things that you want people to know about your product, so that you know they'll they'll make a, an informed decision. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. I, it brings me back to Jesse's point when you ask people, you're not only asking for the testimonial, sometimes you're you're asking them to do the work too. So in this case, you know you're actually helping them because yeah, n- now there's certain people that are going, oh, well, there's a camera. Well, the people who don't mind being on camera are going to kind of naturally come over yep. and they're not going to care as much. And and to your point, then, you're, it's like the truth and nothing but the truth, but it's not necessarily the whole truth. You're not in the court yet. So I don't mean you're being deceiving, but you're yeah. just asking those questions in a way that they respond as a statement. Yep. So then when you take your yeah. questions out of it, it just seems super organic and natural. And it again, they really did yeah. say that. It's it's hundred percent in integrity. Yeah. Right. And and you know, and just it just sounds weird too. Like if you there's some, you know, you just, don't see just the voice in the, the voice. background <laughs> that's asking questions you're like that's weird. So yeah. so it you know it just makes a better video too. So but yeah it's it's hundred percent in integrity, but the way we do it it definitely it's it's like statements and you'll you'll see that all the time like it, we, i think we were talking earlier you know even uh like tv commercials like i think there's like a car manufacturer that'll do that where they'll just bring all these people that have never seen this car before and get their input kind of thing and you know you know they're asking them questions but all you see is them going oh i really love the paint job or oh this is like so much room you yeah know? and it's yeah so. and obviously that was you know they asked hundreds of people and they picked the best ones yeah and yeah it's yeah. okay to do that you know like yeah. I, I think i think most people know yeah, yeah, I think so too. And I, I think w- maybe the <clears throat> the bit of knowledge there that I'm pulling from that is that you didn't just say, how's the coffee? You had yeah. some questions in mind because you, you had statements you wanted to elicit. You, yeah, you, exactly. You, yeah, you That's... knew that there was like, okay, this is low acidic. So you asked questions in a way that you're hoping you're getting an answer like that, but you're not forcing them to say it. You're not putting, not having them read off of a piece of paper absolutely yeah it's that's really kind of the science slash art behind it is to kind of massage those answers so that it it sounds very organic you know coming out but it's also talking you know talking about the things that you want to talk about and what's great is like those are those are things that you you can't say about yourself but other people can you know so and your your time investment here is like okay you went to a farmer's market four or five hours um obviously there's you planned ahead of time and you're, there's editing, so I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm actually I'm not making light of the video production process. I know it's I know it's hard, but realistically, if you if your quality level was like so so, you could kind of you could knock this out in a day probably. You mean for for somebody that that's just doing it on their own? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean yeah, just shoot it and then the clips and just kind of you know spice them together and yeah, there, there's you know there's editing involved and time. It's really, um, and I'm not trying to say like, oh, that's gonna, you know, be commercial TV commercial ready. I'm just saying that if you're just getting started, that's yeah. a way where you and, can... and it'll, I think it'll be very effective too. And so, um, just the organic nature, you know, of of that kind of uh, video, I, I think is good. 
So, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to, that's the thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be slick. I mean, you know, ours, ours, we, we make them a little bit more like that, but we're also doing for brands that, you know, they're, they're very concerned about, you know, their image and their reputation. So, but, um, and, and that's not to say that, you know, you're, the people that, that aren't doing that aren't concerned about their image and reputation, but, you know, the, you know once you get like kind of corporate level, then there's all these like standards and committees and groups and, you know, you, yeah, this has to be this way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, as far as the efficacy of the video, I think it's shooting it on, you know, shooting that style of video on your phone is probably just going to cover it just as well. Yeah. So. Well, and plus it's, it's a bit of just taking it at bat. You know, we, we know most Equid users are, some some of these people it's a side hustle some it's full time but no matter what you get out and you do that you're going to learn more about your product like yeah. even if you don't use that video the first one or two three four times you do it you're going to learn more you're going to get better you're going to try it a different way the next time exactly. so a lot of the times we got to remind the listeners that it's not about going out there and being perfect because a lot of people you know, I don't know if you know my phrase or if I've said it on the show or not, but um, perfectionism can be the most cleverly formed mask of procrastination there is out there. And you just sometimes it's just about moving forward. Yeah, and pull a lever and then then and then uh, <laughs> and then adjust go. accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, you don't have to make the perfect video the first time. Like, yeah, great. It'd be great to have this perfect testimonial. All every unique selling proposition is listed, but. You have all this footage now, and you can turn that into some 15-second clips. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, like you need you need 15-second clips for Instagram. You need, you know, YouTube's. Everybody's got their own little format that works better, right? You know, like yep. Facebook is. You know, people put their YouTube videos on Facebook, and then they're like, oh, you only people only listen for like four seconds. Like, well, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Well, yeah. Well, well, here's actually kind of a little a little uh, uh, secret tip. For us, is, is usually on, on um, most of our videos, and especially those kind of videos, that we we always transition probably eight, you know, five to eight seconds, fifteen seconds at the absolute longest. So there's no real scene that's really longer than than that. And um, I'm sure uh, you have you guys heard the the whole goldfish analogy? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and and it's and, and you know for so so in the I think it was in 1990s, they did a, a, a study of, of, of uh, the average American attention span, and it was re measured in minutes. And then um, sometime around uh, 2000, um, which just is just about when um, internet really started kind of kicking in, um, the average attention span went down to about 18 seconds. And then a couple years ago, I think 2017, which is you know really where people really, really started like it was kind of peak cell phone yeah. stuff. Um, Microsoft did a huge study, and the average attention span went down to eight seconds. So the average American attention span is around eight seconds, and you know to put that in perspective, they say a goldfish's attention span is nine. So we're we're literally less. So. That's why we will do that. We'll we'll slice everything in these little micro pieces of micro content that are you know eight you know somewhere around eight ish seconds, just to keep people's attention span. If it's something where it's, it's really engaging or you know just kind of action packed or something, then you know we'll, we'll go to fifteen or a little bit longer. But for the most part, you know we're always switching. We're switching, 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 and that way people just before they start trailing off and oh it's a new thing. Oh it's a, oh a new squirrel, a squirrel, a squirrel. Mm -hmm. You know kind of thing. And so that really keeps them going longer. And, and so for switching, like, I, I know where you're going with this, but for people that are like, what do you mean switching? Yeah. You know, like, what does that mean? Like, are you putting some fancy graphics to cut to something else, or is it just showing some other? Uh, well, you know? it, it, all de it all depends. So say for a market review video, um, maybe it's, you know, the person talking about that benefit and maybe that's eight seconds, and all of a sudden, then it switches to maybe it's just a slide, and it, and it has like text, you know, that says, okay, you know, oh, it's super, you know, super low, you know, super low uh, um, acidity. Acidity. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm getting thirsty. Just yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So super low acidity, and then boom, it goes. And, and so one, what it does is it reinforces you know what that person just talked about and that benefit point. And then all of a sudden, then you transition, and it's the next person. They're talking about, oh, and it's, you know, it tastes great for organic. And then, you know, boom, maybe it's a slide that says, oh, it tastes great for organic. Or you could just slide into the next person talking about the next thing. So it doesn't have to be 
very fancy at all. Um, you know, you know the, the, the trick is is just to have little eight second engaging sound bites that you can switch off. And what's good is like what you and what you were talking about is um, we do a lot uh, where we'll take those that whole video, um, which maybe it's a two and a half three minute market review video, and we'll slice it into micro content for each like, like each one of those testimonials might be a little benefit point. And what's great about that is, so say you're running ads and you really want to find out, you know, why are people buying my product? So you could run a little thing, just, and it's just eight seconds, you know, and, and it's, maybe it's a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad, and it's, it's a guy saying, oh, you know, this is, you know, this tastes great for organic coffee, and then, you know, and then it's like, find out more. And then it goes to the site, and maybe it goes to the full video or whatever where people could find out more. But basically, you're just grabbing their interest and getting them off page and, and then going. And then, but what that does is it lets you test all the different things that, because what you think is awesome about your product is 99.9% .9 of the time not what everybody else thinks is awesome about your product, and it's not why they buy your product. You know, because you're you're so in it and so vested, and so doing like you know doing something like that where you have all these all this micro content, and then you see what converts it better. Uh, it, that's gonna that's actually gonna tell you like why are people buying your product, and then you just do more of that. Mm -hmm. So. There's definitely something to be said about the testing. Right? Yeah. Even Hollywood doesn't have it figured out, right? No. Not all those movies now are blockbusters. Yeah, now these movies are, um, like, was it Netflix where you, you're choosing your own outcome, you know, and yeah. different scenes and things? Well, that's crazy. Love yeah. that. Yeah, like, you. so you think you have all these great testimonials in this minute and a half video, two-minute video, Yeah. but there was really six or seven different you know, selling points in there. So if you break it down, yeah, now you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then another trick you, um, is... Uh, depending on what video player you're using, so um, uh, like you can use Wistia, it's a little pricey, you know, it's, but um, but uh, it has great analytics. And I think Vimeo does th the same thing where um, you can see, like, as people are watching, you can see where they dropped off. Yep. And you can see that where, where there's most engagement. So that's another way where if you didn't slice it up into micro content and run all this stuff, you can just see, oh, these people dropped off and, you know, in you know, 92.5 seconds. So there must be, you know, either, you know, either change the video or next time make it something a little bit different and, and figure out what, what's going to keep them engaged. And then you just keep fine tuning. Yeah. Makes yeah, sense. I could see the drop off part, mm -hmm. but, and I don't want to geek out on it too much, but I'm a big video fan. Too, yeah. But, but how could it measure engagement? Are you talking like comments in the video or something like that? Um, or? Well, as far as this engaged, like watching, actually, actually watching the video. Got it. So you'll know, being engaged in 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 watching the video. So say you know nobody made it to the end of the video. You know where did most people stop watching the video? Copy that. Yeah. So what about like um, rewind? If they if they're always rewinding that one spot, maybe you just. Yeah, Could, oh, like, well, I think that's, that's a profound statement yeah. right there. You know, like, oh, we got to say that more. They yeah. rewound that. They want to learn more about that piece. <laughs> yeah, either that or it's like a big error. Like, oh, I should have wore underwear. Or, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. But, you know, so, yeah, that, yeah. that's good. And so for people that are like Vimeo, Wistia, so that would be the players where maybe you want to have this on the top of your your home screen or you know the top of a category page. You would use those players. You could also use YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube's free. Yeah, YouTube I think has those kind of. Uh, like YouTube's got some pretty good analytics now. On yeah, the back end, it so. does have the. Where you can tell where people are dropping off, mm -hmm. and you know, like there's. We won't get into all the the. We won't nerd out on that, but yeah, there's yeah. there's plenty of stats on that too. So yeah, the first point is you got to make these videos so you can then you can geek out on the analytics yeah. later. You know, so. the thing with you know if if you're using YouTube as kind of your video player platform is you always just want to make sure you're super legit because you know you don't want to get like a whole bunch of videos and then they're they're kind of borderline and it, YouTube just you know then all of a sudden you just get disappeared really quick. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and it happens all the time, you know, and nobody even knows why most of the time. So, What do you feel about, um, you know, when people hear the word funnel, we talk about funnel, there's different yeah. ways to, to do it. Do you, what do you feel about posting, like, the links inside of other platforms, or do you think they should just be uploading them nat natively? So I'm not, I'm not sure. So, like, they shoot something on their phone, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do this and make it, make them go do that. And like, they they just know they they hear this. There's so many steps to get them to go here, get them to. Do you think they should be uploading to YouTube and then putting that YouTube link in their Facebook, or should they just take that video and go straight into Facebook with that video? Oh yeah, um, I I personally think that 
that each social platform kind of speaks a different language and is usually a different format where, you know, what Instagram, you know, you usually want to keep it around 15 seconds. And if you run an Instagram ad, it's like 59 seconds or less. And usually it's, you know, it's, it's a square format where, um, you know, Facebook is vertical or horizontal. And then, and, you know, in, in Facebook, you also want to add uh, text captions because a lot of times your video will play without, without sound. So you want to try to, you know, hook them in. And then, you know, YouTube's a little bit different because YouTube, um, if you're running an ad, say a YouTube ad, like a pre-roll ad, you know, you always want to hook them. You always want to get them to take an action with, within the first five or 10 seconds. So you, you so it's, you know, it's going to be scripted and shot a little bit differently because you want to grab their attention and get them off the page because, you know, a YouTube pre-roll video or pre-roll ad, you know, those are those videos that you kind of annoy everybody when, you know, you're trying to watch a video and then you got to watch another video before you can see that video. So you mm-hmm. can't skip for five seconds. Everybody hates them, but, but they work really well. So, yep. yeah. So that first five or 10 seconds, you know, that's where you want to grab them. And so, so I think really like each, for the most part, you, you really want to think about the platform that you're putting the video on and not just kind of do a broad, you know, like a broad kind of brush stroke and just use yep. one video for everything. Like you can do that, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna work as well. And, and again, you know, you're trying to gain their trust. So you want to, you want, you want them to always think, well, this guy's just, you know, this guy's just blowing out stuff. And yeah, Mm -hmm. it's never easy. There's never like, oh, you can just make one video and your problems are solved. Sit back and count your money. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people sell that, but (laughs) you know, it's because it's easy. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. The truth is it's not easy. It's just, you know, I mean, it's just business, you know, marketing is, you know, marketing takes some work and it takes some thought and it's, there's, there is no magic bullet. There's not a big red button you can hit. So. Uh, man, I wish there were. You yeah. know, we keep bringing uh, big red buttons to the podcast here, but there's like you gotta, <laughs> you still have to do the work. So yeah. you know, if you're looking for video, um, so you gave several different examples here. We did like a market research, testimonial, and then we talked about different lengths and formats for these different platforms. Right. So for somebody that's just getting started, like what would be their, you know, like where would you tell somebody to start? These are physical product merchants. Yeah, so physical products, you know, depending on the product, um, and again, it's, so this is like shooting with your cell phone kind of thing. Or, you know, most people have a decent DSLR yeah. camera, too. Yeah. Like, you don't have yeah. to use your phone, you right? Know, like, and, and, yeah, and kind of editing and things like that. Yeah. Um, I would probably say uh, probably one of the most versatile that you can really kind of use for a lot of different things is, is, is a video we call a product demonstration video. And um, a product demonstration video really is sh- just showing that product being used. And then, you know, we'll, we'll have some music and then, you know, some dynamic text. You know, the text is really the benefit points, you know, just like we would do on a market review video or, or a testimonial video. So, you know, it, would, it, it, it might be, you know, somebody making that cup of organic coffee because the purpose of a demonstration video is the person that's watching the video is in their mind's eye, it's them, you know, using that product and they're imagining themselves using that product, you know, riding that big wave or, you know, on that foamy surfboard or whatever, you know, or boogie board or whatever. Um, So, and, you know, you can do that where it doesn't have to be really fancy or, you know, maybe it's cooking stuff. So you can do kind of like those tasty style top down videos where it's just showing the product, you know, you're doing a bunch of recipes with whatever you're, you know, maybe it's a cooking, you know, a knife or maybe it's some kind of food thing, you know, and it, and it just shows the stuff being used because those people love those yeah, mm-hmm. those things. And they're not hard to be shoot. And, and like a lot of phones, phones even have like time lapse photography where you could just every five seconds, you know, they'll take a picture and you can just put it right above the top of the the stuff so um a product demonstration video because you can you can actually use those as as an ad or you can put it on your product page um if you're selling on amazon it's probably the most accepted you you're you're the most likely not to get rejected by doing a product demo video because amazon really hates you know kind of braggy talky direct market type stuff okay so just showing the product being used and talking about benefits, you, you can't go wrong. And mm. and that's probably the best thing to lower people's fear barrier because you're just you're just t- showing them all the things that they want to see. I think you mentioned with Amazon too. Yeah, I think I'm seeing that's almost like a must-have. Oh yeah. Like I I've, I mean, we all shop on Amazon, <laughs> like and. 
that, yeah, as you scroll down, there's this video that plays. Like, so it's almost like if you don't have that, you're going to have a tough time really making it on Amazon. Yeah. So yeah. that becomes a must-have. Uh, yeah, and for your e-commerce site, boy, I don't have any product demonstration videos, Rich. <laughs> I, I think i got to add this to the list here. But, yeah, right. I, I can see it. Like, people are visual by nature. Yeah. If you don't have the video, yeah, you have pictures, you have text and things like that, but you're not really grabbing them or you're yeah. not getting in their mind of why they are showing like this. how easy the product is to use or you know what's you know are showing kind of the end result of you know you know because you know people just kind of want that gratification so you know showing you know how this how this product's going to make their life you know easier or or you know make them happier or look better or whatever kind of thing okay so like we just did one um it was uh kind of a uh a makeup remover thing and all it was was just like this girl who was a model and she had like magic markers all over her face you know stuff and then the you know she's like she just holds she doesn't say a word you know it's just music she just holds up like you know the the can of this you know special makeup remover stuff you know first she did it with the, you know showed the magic marker and then she takes the makeup remover stuff and like you know she just does the whole thing you know and it was kind of like a speeded up time lapse thing and and People love that. They just wow. they went nuts, you know. And that's super simple. And you could do that, you know. And, and there's no text on that either. Nothing. And now you can. Now you're international. Yeah. You, you know, you yeah. didn't speak in English, so now any any language it yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Have you found any of the platforms are better than others for top of the funnel stuff, or does that just matter based on your product? Uh, you mean as far as like social platforms? Yeah, because something like that. To your point, like it's not like someone's searching for that video, and if it, but it could easily, you know, it basically calls its own audience out in yeah. the video. Have you noticed, like, wow, those work great on Facebook because they're just kind of putting around looking for stuff? Yeah. Or, so, um, and, and it, it kind of, you know, to a certain ex extent, it depends on the product. But um, Instagram for e folks has, has been great. And I've noticed, like, uh, there's a, a good a good percentage. You know, there, there's some people that half of their, you know, they're selling half of their products. You know, doing, you know, 50 percent of their business comes from Instagram and just doing, you know. Um, and those are short videos now too. Yeah, super short. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do Instagram stories, and those are longer. And I, I don't think you can do promoted Instagram stories yet. Like, you can't make an ad out of a story that's longer. But I, you know, you can you can go 59 seconds or less as far as an Instagram ad. I think um, you can. By the way, I'm not. Okay, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of inventory in the stories section, so you, yeah. can, you can pay for those. Yeah. But Because yeah. I know what, like when they launch their plat, you know, platform in the stories, and they're like, at, at the beginning, you're like, um, you know, I, I, like, I couldn't find a way to do that, so now that, I, that's I cool. know, yeah, actually, now that I think back, I know yeah. you can. You yeah, know, well, and, I mean, these platforms, what, we're, we haven't just started in this. We see they give a lot of stuff out for free in the beginning and give all sorts of reach until they find out what works, and then they'll gladly yeah. take your money for oh, it. Oh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, and by the way... It's in their best interest to do that. So, yeah. yeah. I feel like I wouldn't be doing my job as the, the equid guy here without saying, like, okay, if you're on Instagram stories, you can now tag those products with your with, with your equid catalog in Instagram. So now as yeah. you're watching this story that's a product demonstration, there's that little little thing that you can just, anybody can click with their thumb to go buy right from your store. So, yeah. you know, there's a little plug for equid For uh, shoppable posts. Shoppable posts on yeah. stories. Yeah. It, yeah. It, exactly. And, like, a good example is uh, we did some stuff for snow teeth whitening. So if you look at Snow's... Uh, Instagram profile, and they do they do a ton of stuff. Not not with just us, but you know they're forty million dollar a year company, and and most of their business came from from Instagram. And it, and it was just you know they would have a lot of influencers and sure like Floyd Mayweather you know was you know would, would you know it showed him like get his teeth you know whiten his own teeth. Does he have all his teeth still? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he, could, he could he could afford to buy new ones. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so so that's a good one. Um, so product demonstration, like what were, uh, you, you mentioned some good things here. I want to give a couple like bullet points on mm -hmm. what would people show in this, like how to use it, mm -hmm. what, what does it do for you? Like, you know, you work with a lot of clients. What are, yeah, I would say, you know, what problems does it solve? If you can show how it solves a problem, um, okay. if you can show how it makes someone's life better or easier, um, if you can show how it saves them money, maybe. 
or if it makes them look better. Those are really kind of the main, you know, kind of primal lizard brain things that, that, that in the back of the heads, people may not even realize that's what they're looking for, but that's most of the things is, you know, is uh, you want to feel safe, you know, you want to, you know, you, you, know, you want to be protect, you know, be protected. You want to look good and, you know, you want to make money. So, yep. yeah, those are... <laughs> Yeah. We'll make that little clip for our Instagram story right there. That's yeah. Our, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Um, so an, another another good platform uh, for e-commerce is, is actually YouTube. Um, you know, a lot of people forget YouTube is the second largest search engine you know, on the planet. So if you do videos that are kind of geared towards you know product searches that people would search for, um, then you know a lot of times you know if, you know if, if you do it right and format it right then the, you know those kind of videos will pop up in their search so and that's and then you can you know lead them to your site or, or whatever mm -hmm. so that's, that's a yeah. good one you know and of course Facebook everybody's on Facebook so uh, I, re I rarely even talk about Facebook just because it's so kind of ubiquitous <laughs> you know? like of course you're gonna everybody do it. knows you know <laughs> like, do you have clients so I've noticed our videos on Facebook um, for Equid like they get the listen time or the watch time is super short right. relative to even Instagram or YouTube for, for sure compared to YouTube. Yeah. Are, are, do you have clients that are having success with videos specifically on Facebook? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, Facebook, uh, I would say, you know, about a minute, minute and a half for your video. Okay. Depending. Yep. Um, and then Facebook. Uh, so it's sort of similar to YouTube then. Mm -hmm. Like it's not necessarily like a whole different, you know, where Instagram not, is 15 yeah. seconds, but... Okay. Yeah, like you could run kind of an Instagram, uh, or a, not an Instagram, I'm sorry, a YouTube video um, on Facebook, and it would do pretty well. You know, I would just make sure you, you caption it, you know, and we caption even the YouTube videos too. So um, so, so those two, you, you could kind of switch back and forth. So With that same um, minute to minute and a half. Yeah, a YouTube yep. video do really well on Facebook. A Facebook video may not do really well on YouTube because a Facebook video, you may not kind of put that engagement or that hook in the very first five or ten seconds. So, um, so, so kind of keep that in mind. And then one, actually one thing that I would say one platform that a lot of people really don't think about, and especially for e-commerce, is, 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 is there's a, a lot of low-hanging fruit is Pinterest. Um, and, and you can do videos on Pinterest. Yep. And so especially, you know, kind of the do-it-yourselfer type people that, that have products that, that are like that or camping videos or survival stuff, any, you know, anything like that where it's, you know, doing stuff kind of kind of products, Pinterest is awesome because people, you know, they create these little, these whole little, you know, categories. And then every month, like Pinterest or like every week, actually, Pinterest will email you and say, hey, these are new new pins and, and this and and so a lot of a lot of people do really well on pinterest yeah so mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I highly recommend using that yeah yeah we've had a, just had did a couple pods on pinterest so, oh, so yeah i know yeah huge yeah. huge fan and yeah they live on as well so and, like, and it's and it's such a it's so low-hanging fruit because a lot of people don't really talk about it that much you know they always talk about the big three but it's not really mm -hmm. yeah 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 no i i just we're super thankful. I mean, these yeah. have been some great tips. If if people are out there and they're thinking this is great, I'm going to give this a shot. Um, but they might want to, you know, work with you or learn more about you. Where should where should someone go to check out more what Rob's burn Rob Burns and company is doing? Yeah, just go to um, videotelepathy.com, and and um, yeah, there's you know uh, you could. Uh, uh, you can actually uh, set up a time to ch to chat with us, and, and we don't ever uh, we don't ever sell you. We just answer questions. That's kind of our kind of our company culture is we just help people to death, and you know it's up to you to decide whether you want to buy stuff. So we're you know we're never going to try and sell you, but if you have questions and, and you know you just need help or kind of figuring out you know what what kind of uh, strategy you want to do with your videos, then then we're glad to help. Sweet. Yeah, we can tell you you just like to help people and provide value. We wanted to make sure you got a chance sell. to mention yeah. your your company out there because <laughs> I know that's not in your nature. So yeah. we're gonna try to help you sell yourself a little bit. But uh, Rich, any uh, last questions or comments? Uh, not really. No, I just got hungry thinking of all these. Coffee and yeah. food and all these product description we videos. Get some low like, acid organic coffee. Yeah, let's go try to shoot a video for one of these uh, restaurants around here, real quick. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. All right, Rob, thanks for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Everybody else out there, go make it happen.
Hey, this is Jesse and Rich. We want to let you know we really appreciate you listening. We hope you find the tips we give you helpful for growing your business. You can find all of our past episodes and a lot more useful stuff at equi.com forward slash podcast. And also, check us out on your favorite podcasting platform like Apple Podcast or Stitcher. And make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing. Be sure to let us know what you think by rating and reviewing so we can serve you better. So subscribe on your favorite platform. And come join our community, check out the transcripts, or tell us why you would be a great guest at equid.com forward slash podcast.